Hello, hello. God bless you so very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, members of the St. Luke uh, Church family, members of other church families who participate with us and listen to our lessons, and uh, many of you uh, who have made uh, this uh, lesson and these announcements worthwhile over the last uh, 14 to 15 months. Uh, thank you uh, so very much for your participation as well uh, as your commitment, uh, not only to uh, this ministry, to, to, but to various other ministries uh, as we have gone. Let me go ahead and get into uh, the lesson today. I'm in the library uh, there, which is part of my regular routine and uh, saw somebody just walked into my, walk past my screen there, but that's okay. Praise the Lord. Hey, Amen. Let's go ahead. Uh, continue. Uh, uh, we were off on last week uh, and uh, took a much needed break. And so uh, we want to make sure that this week uh, we continue our, our mailing in of our money, uh, the sending in of our gifts, and you know the various ways there to do that. Of course, our church address uh, make sure that you can uh, mail them to our recording steward. Also use Givelify or stop by the church uh, on Sunday mornings, on Sunday mornings, all right? Of course, tomorrow, Sunday school, uh, July the 18th, the July 18th uh, Sunday school lesson will be taught by members of the Williams Memorial Church. And uh, all of the teachers, all of the churches have done an outstanding job and are putting forth uh, their very, very best effort uh, there. Uh, praise the Lord. That's the name, uh, uh, the number rather, the meeting ID uh, and the passcode. Make sure you tune in at 9 a.m., 9 a.m. I believe you'll be in for a great uh, treat. Uh, beginning uh, on next Sunday. Now, on next Sunday, I had mentioned uh, previously uh, that you all were welcome to come on July the 18th. I'm still extending that invitation for those of you who desire to want to come in and, and, and to be there, uh, be in the worship service. You're more than welcome to. Uh, there's still just to know that there is still some construction uh, going on uh, at this time, but the pews are uh, back in place and the sanctuary uh, is ready. If you just want to come in and sit in uh, and uh, tomorrow, and hopefully by the end of the week, all of the uh, construction uh, will be completed in our bathrooms and uh, uh, the fellowship hall will be put into place uh, and you'll be able to come in uh, and worship and uh, do that. And we'll just continue uh, the in-person and the virtual worship. For those of you who, who worship with us virtually, please know that virtual worship will continue. Uh, I will. We, we started it and uh, I, I'm not going to stop doing it once we return to in-person worship. And listen, uh, we're not going to uh, send you a recording of the lesson and say, hey, tune in at 12 and see the lesson uh, once we finish. No, uh, I have committed myself to where we're going to do live uh, worship service. So you will get to see what's going on in the worship service at the same time everybody else is um, uh, each Sunday. Uh, when once we return to full in-person worship. I just wanted my virtual worshipers uh, to know that. We're going to keep on doing it. Make sure that you are taking the vaccine. Listen, um, as you see the news and as you see uh, uh, where there are hot spots and where there is are surges and where there are outbreaks, there's one common theme and there's one common denominator, and that is in the people who are unvaccinated. And those of us who are vaccinated, let's encourage our family members and let's encourage other people to take this vaccine. I know there are people who say, well, the Lord hadn't told me to do this. Well, trust me, the Lord hadn't told you to do a lot of stuff. The Lord didn't tap you on the shoulder and say, put that seatbelt on or use your turn signal. Or the Lord didn't have to tell you to not drink and drive. And the Lord doesn't tell you every day to take your medicine. You know that there are certain things that you just good for you. So please, let's not get caught up uh, in the silliness of what other people are doing. Others are not taking the vaccine out of uh, out of political uh, pettiness. I will call it that. But let us, as African Americans, let's let, let, let let's trust science and trust God, and uh, let's make sure that we take that vaccine. Birthdays for the month of July: uh, Willie Mae Hudson. Uh, there, my mother. Happy birthday, Levon. Ashley Nicholson, I believe her name is Ashley Price there, Larry and Sharon Nedja, Willie Ned, Naoka Strickland, 
Keisha Savannah, Jerry Thomas, Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee Dotter and Miss Robinson have been doing some great work up at the St. Luke Church. They have been working hard. Praise the Lord. Tim Thomas had a birthday this week. Willie Thomas, God bless you. Deetra Smith and also John Wayne Morgan, uh, Barbara Radford's brother there. She wanted to make sure that I included her brother uh, for his birthday. and Happy birthday there as well, uh, Mr. John Wayne uh, Morgan and everybody and, uh, who had a birthday in the month of July. God bless each of you. Uh, listen, let me get into this lesson today. And it is dealing with the faith of Abraham. In Hebrews 11 and 8, uh, the scripture says, by faith, Abraham was being called, being called, obeyed to go into a place which he was to receive as an inheritance. He went not knowing where he was going. He walked by faith without sight long before Paul put that scripture on paper. So let's go ahead and look. Let's go ahead and look here at, uh, at uh, where we were here uh, in this particular lesson. Now, during Paul's ministry, a key issue concerned the role of the Jewish law for Christians who were not of Jewish descent. At the time Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, the famous Jerusalem Council had already recognized that Gentiles would be welcomed into the church without being required to keep the law of Moses. This including, they didn't have to have the circumcision, which symbolized the entire law for the Jews. Circumcision was perhaps the most honored of all Jewish traditions. This rite began with Abraham and Jewish men had proudly borne the mark of this, this ritual for hundreds of years, for generations, as a physical sign of their separation from the Gentiles. Now, the traditional adversaries of Israel, let me go back here, uh, were called uncircumcised, uh, and it was used as a epithet. In fact, I believe uh, uh, Goliath is referred to as an uncircumcised Philistine. Any foreigner who wanted to be accepted into Israel had to be circumcised, and to be an uncircumcised Jew, this man, was to be expelled from Israel and thus not a part of the nation. The Gentiles did not welcome the idea of circumcision as a condition for worshiping God. The physical act of circumcision was culturally repugnant to them and physically painful. So now, after God made his promise to Abraham, every male member of Abraham's household was required to be circumcised. It was a visible, continuous reminder that God owed, that God, um, Israel rather, owed its existence to God who created them out of nothing. Let's go ahead and go back to our scripture. Our text comes from Romans chapter four, uh, verses one through 12. Romans, Paul is trying, is, is, I believe he's in Corinth and he's gonna make it to Rome, which is one of his great goals there. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. He believed God on several occasions. He believed God when God told him where to go. He believed God when he, when he gave his nephew Lot uh, uh, the greener pastures, uh, if you would. And then it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Our faith is counted for righteousness. Abraham believes God, and then he is counted, accounted for righteousness. But then, but to him that does not work, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted uh, for righteousness. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, faith without works, but is dead, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. We are blessed, uh, David here says, scripture says, our iniquities, aren't you glad your sins, your iniquities are forgiven and that your sins now are covered? 
because of our faith in God. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin into them. God, God does not give sin, will not impute, will not give sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision circumcision also, meaning that is this just for the Jew or is it for everybody? For we say that faith was given to Abraham because he was righteous. Well, how then was it reckoned? When, when he was in circumcision or when he was in uncircumcision? Ah, that's strange. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Watch this. Abraham had long reached, gone past the age where men were to be circumcised before uh, the ritual began. In fact, he was beyond childbearing age when this happened. So the question becomes, was he blessed and righteous before or after? But this scripture says, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. God, you know what the scripture says. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Oh, I love that. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. I like this right here. Although they may not be circumcised, that righteousness might be given and granted unto them also. So, 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 so listen, what is he saying? Abraham was a righteous, good, faithful man, even before the act of circumcision. Perhaps we might say today that, 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 that the day that we give our hearts uh, to God, and, and perhaps there is no baptism that has taken place, but, but our righteousness perhaps is imputed upon us even before that, and it's just the sealing, the baptism of, uh, yes, of that sign. Praise the Lord there. Uh, and then the, the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father, which he had been yet uncircumcised. In other words, even before there was a circumcision, God had still put his hands on, yes, on Abraham. Praise the Lord. I love that right there. Now, let's look at Abraham's faith. And he believed God, the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness in Genesis 15. Abraham's faith is in, in one specific promise, is then held up as a model for all of us. God told Abraham he would have a natural born son with his wife, Sarah, and become the father of many nations. Abraham believed that and continued to believe in it, even as the years passed without a child. He remained faithful, even as he approached 100 years old, and Sarah was by 90. In fact, Paul insists that his faith grew stronger, not weaker over time. That's why God counted his faith as righteousness. My question to us is, is our faith growing as we age or as we experience more in life? I just believe mine is. Now, Abraham had a plan of faith, a pilgrimage of faith, and there was also a promise of faith. And then I want to share with you how he demonstrated his faith. Now, the plan of faith involved his obedience. But yeah, your plan begins with obeying God. When he calls us to witness, to live, be faithful where we are, we must live in obedience. We may not know what lies ahead, but we do know when God calls us, we have to obey. The pilgrimage of faith, Abraham travels to the land of promise. He left friends, home, and business, everything to follow. God, God may not call you to geographically have a pilgrimage and move, but God does cause us to act as he does. And then there's a promise of faith. Faith does have his promises. When we obey and leave what he wants us, God will bless us in working miracles in our lives. Sarah was 90. Abraham was 100 but they conceived the son of promise. Praise the Lord. The demonstration of faith. Abraham was asked to sacrifice that son of promise. Abraham demonstrated his faith, realizing it was real. In his actions, he did what God told him. In his obedience, he obeyed God. In his words, he believed God, was able to raise his son Isaac up. Yes, sparing from the sword, even if he were dead. 
Now, tomorrow, praise the Lord, I'll be back preaching tomorrow. I'll be back preaching tomorrow. It's a sermon that I've preached many times before, but I just need to talk about it because we live in a season of discouragement. We live in a season where people are always complaining and sometimes it seems that they're never thanking God for what God is doing and what God has done. But I need you to look at 1 Samuel chapter 30 tonight. As soon as you finish watching this, read 1 Samuel chapter 30. They get back from battle and realize that everything, their wives, their children, everything has been taken away from them, but not killed. David then chooses to do the best thing. He encourages himself in the Lord. That's all I want you to do from now on. Just start to encourage yourself in the Lord. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible tomorrow at church. And then let's continue to gradually make our way to in-person worship. If, you, if not, make sure that you're on YouTube. Make sure that you're on Facebook. God bless you. And God keep you, of course, is our prayer.